Thanks for downloading the Look Away Now podcast from BBC Radio 4. If you want to find out more, go to bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 4. But not until you've enjoyed Look Away Now. Thank you very much. I'm Gary Richardson. Welcome to Look Away Now, the show that mixes sport and comedy, a bit like England trying to pick a rugby coach. <laughs> Amongst the runners at the London Marathon on Sunday were six Maasai warriors carrying shields and spears. They thoroughly enjoyed themselves, especially when they came across Jean and Steve Pearson, a couple from Epping running for charity in a rhino suit. <laughs> Meanwhile, marathon organisers revealed that over 200 competitors were caught cheating this year. Rather than run, they used London transport. They were found out when they arrived five hours after everyone else. <laughs> In the Premier League, Chelsea's title hopes were wrecked by a late Wigan equaliser and by Avram Grant's decision to take up coaching in 1972. (laughs) And Liverpool, the boardroom drama continues with more twists in the plot than the entire series of Brookside, though we're still waiting for the lesbian kiss between Hicks and Gillette. (laughs) At the US Masters in Augusta, Trevor Immelman has described his victory as the ultimate roller coaster ride, less because of his performance and more because he had to queue up for two hours and then a child was sick on the back of his head. <laughs> but it was a, a desperately disappointing weekend for British players who at times seemed like they were having a competition amongst themselves as to who could screw up a promising position in the most spectacular fashion. Paul Casey at the 12th, just two shots off the lead now, so he'll be looking for a way to plunge suddenly out of contention right here. <laughs> Oh, and that's brilliant by Casey. He's hit his ball into the guard's van of a passing train. (laughs) Even Daffy Duck himself would have been proud of that. (laughs) So, Justin Rose taps in for a septuple bogey at the (laughs) 10th. Leans down to pick up his ball. Oh, and he falls into the hole. Well, I'm at the 8th, and Lee Westwood has rather shot himself in the foot here by shooting himself in the foot here. (laughs) Great stuff from Worksop's finest. Well, Ian Poulter has found a particularly ingenious way of scuppering his master's bid here at the 3rd because he appears to have strapped a posse of ravenous ferrets to his legs. (laughs) Sorry, I'm just hearing those are, in fact, his normal trousers. (laughs) Well, it's been a splendid effort from the British lads. But it's all about consistency now. They need to show they can bottle it week in, week out, and then next year maybe, just maybe, they can equal the master himself, Colin Montgomery, of course, and not even qualify in the first place. (laughs) Well, now, this is extraordinary. Vladimir Klitschko threw a big haymaker there and literally made some hay. Only a small clump, but trust me, the judges will have noticed. (laughs) Now, out of the Champions League and beaten at Old Trafford at the weekend, Arsenal's season is effectively over and plans to put an extension on the Emirates Stadium trophy cabinet have been shelved for the third year running. (laughs) But just how is Arsene Wenger taking it all? I'm delighted to say he's on the line. Arsene, welcome to the programme. Thank you. Hello, Gary. Now, uh, some observers think you're getting a bit paranoid, Arsene. How do you respond to that? Uh, I think that it's a little bit... Wait, is someone listening in? Sorry? I heard a click on the line. Someone's recording our conversation. Well, yes, the BBC. You're all in it together. In what? Uh, Are you suggesting there's some kind of conspiracy against Arsenal? You can say that. I'm not saying that. Uh, Then what are you saying? I'm not saying. (laughs) Mm, Some people suggest you contributed to your own downfall by appointing William Gallus as captain. Yes, he's been replaced. So who's the captain now? No, Gary. Someone has replaced William Gallas with a look-alike. Some kind of replicant. What about uh, Adebayor's uh, downturn in form? Replicant. Uh, Cesc Fabricus losing his edge? Replicant. Senderos's erratic defending? Yes, he's just crap, to be honest. (laughs) I have to ask you, aren't you just holding on to this conspiracy fantasy to avoid facing the truth that you just weren't good enough? It was Prince Philip, Gary. He ordered the ref to give Manu that penalty. Arson. Matthew Flemini was pregnant with Almunia's baby. Arson, I'm sorry to say it, you're clearly cracking up. The moon landing was filmed at White Hart Lane, Gary, and Jimmy Greaves killed Kennedy. Arson Wenger, thank you for joining us. Now, once again, like every other sports programme these days, I have alongside me a panel of ex-professional footballers watching things on TV monitors. And once again, there's no live sport on at the moment, so instead, our lads are going to be watching The Bible. (laughs) 
Uh, first up, it's the former Oldham Athletic Manager, Stan Allen. He's going to be keeping an eye uh, for us on the Book of Genesis. Uh, has it started with a bang, Stan? <laughs> Specifically not, Gary, no. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the boss of the entire universe outfit, who is called God, had a bit of a selection dilemma here, because just prior to kick-off, absolutely nothing existed apart from himself. Uh, but uh, <laughs> he managed to field a pretty decent-looking lineup at the end here, uh, Gary. The team in full heavens in goal, uh, back four of Earth Day, Night and Firmament. Uh, seas, dry land, vegetation and fish across the middle, and up front he goes with cattle and creeping things. <laughs> But uh, the big question is, will God himself be involved at some stage? He is a great option off the bench, Gary, because he's just so creative. In fact, as I'm, as I'm talking to you now, Gary, he's just created hens. <laughs> Dan, thank you very much. Now, news coming in from elsewhere in the Bible tonight. Over at Exodus, I'm hearing that God has now picked his Ten Commandments. Uh, he's going 451 with Thou Shall Not Kill, playing as a lone striker. <laughs> Next up, uh, the former Tranmere midfielder, Andy McMahon, keeping tabs on the Gospels for us, Andy. How's it begun? Well, Gary, a star is born here, in a manger of all places. Everyone was in there, Joseph, Mary, the three kings here on loan from the Orient, of course. <laughs> and the shepherds, the shepherds too, who I have to say have been caught flock-watching for me once or twice. <laughs> I'm just trying to see now who gave the final delivery. You'll have to bear with me, Gary. There's cattle lowing everywhere. <laughs> It was Mary. I thought it had to be. She's the only woman in there. Though it says on my team sheet that she's still a virgin. <laughs> sort that lot out. <laughs> oh, and now one of the wise men steps forward. Oh, and that is an absolute gift, Gary. Frankincense, if I'm no mistaken. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much. Now, they're underway at the first letter to the Corinthians. Interesting fact about Corinthians for you. They're the only team to have both received epistles from St Paul and won the FA Cup. That news <laughs> are just in. Uh, completing our lineup is the ex Walsall defender Brian Browner. What are you watching for us? I'm watching Book of Revelation to St John the Divine. Uh, apparently, it's predictions and that. Uh, I'm not really sure what to expect, but uh, I had my tarot cards read on Brighton Seafront once, and apart from the stuff about me being bi curious, she was spot on. Mm, no. <laughs> anyway, interesting lineup from the opposition tonight. They go with four across the midfield war, famine, pestilence, and death. Uh, <laughs> death a little redundant in this side, what with his role largely being covered by the other three. Uh, <laughs> and up front, they've got their number 666. He's an ugly little beast, a bit like Carlos Tevez with hooves. <laughs> Brian, thank you very much indeed. Well, first came that car advert where the Indian chap turned his old ambassador into a Peugeot with a hammer. Now India has its own Formula One team, as well as reinventing cricket with the Indian Premier League. I'm joined now by the tycoon behind a whole raft of investments on the subcontinental sporting scene, Mr Malhotra Navratan. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here, sir. No, it is my pleasure to be interviewed by the fabulous guy, Richie Richardson. <laughs> it's just Gary Richardson. A uh, batting average of 44 and a string of hit gangster movies. <laughs> you're a legend, Mr. Ritchie. And now, you're white and married to the Madonna. <laughs> Where do you find the time? Look, look, let's, let's skip that for a minute. You're, you're hoping to turn India into something of a sporting powerhouse, aren't you? And that is my recurring dream, Gary. Well, it is one of them. To throw off the shackles of the tradition and make India the best in the world at many new sports, starting with skiing. <laughs> skiing? I had no idea India had any skiers Incredible Gary, you shove someone down Everest With nothing but a pair of cricket bats Strapped to his feet They learn very fast mm, I, I imagine they have to uh... Admittedly, not many of the young hopefuls Have made it through the initial training so far mm, How many have made it through? None <laughs> You do have a head start in one sport And I think you know what I'm talking about Of course I do Bullfighting how on earth are you going to establish bullfighting in a country where the bull's sacred? Someone did make that point at a fairly early planning meeting, actually. But it is quite simple. We use elephants with horns strapped on. Hmm. Surely that can't work. It does work, Gary. Though perhaps it could be fairer. Well, how's that? So far, nine bullfighters have been trampled to death. While one bull has suffered a slight scratch on the knee. <laughs> but these are just teething troubles. Hmm. 
So that's, uh, that's skiing, bullfighting. Uh, what else have you got up your sleeve? We're bidding for the 2010 London Marathon. <laughs> Surely that's got to take place in London. No, rubbish, Gary. The London Marathon will take place in Mumbai. Although obviously not at the same weekend as we are hosting Wimbledon and the Tour de France. <laughs> that would be madness. <laughs> Anything else? We're pushing for the kabaddi to become an Olympic sport. Mm, now, interesting, kabaddi. It's a game very much like British pool dog. Um, what do you think makes it worthy, though, of Olympic inclusion? Because kabaddi is the only sport in the world where throughout the game you have to say... Yes. If I could just stop it. <laughs> Mr. Malhotra and Navratan, thank you very much indeed for coming in. The umpire's called that one out. Is Federer going to challenge that? Yes, he is. So we're consulting Hawkeye, and Hawkeye says it was out. Oh, but wait, Corporal Klinger and Hot Lips Houlihan say it was in. Federer wins the point. <laughs> uh, je uh, voudrais... Uh, uh, Pardon, monsieur? Uh, it, it possible pour moi a ham sandwich. Je ne comprends pas, monsieur. Oh... Are you frustrated by your poor grasp of foreign languages? Then why not try the new language learning technique that's taking Britain by storm? Yes, it's the Duckworth Lewis method. <laughs> you already know the Duckworth Lewis method from the way it's revolutionised one day cricket. Matches that used to be ruined by the weather now get ruined by the Duckworth Lewis method. <laughs> the Duckworth-Lewis method works just as well for languages. It's so easy. You simply take the English phrase you want to say, multiply it by the amount of time left, divide it by French, multiply that by the square root of ham plus beer factorial, add nine, and hey presto, you're speaking foreign. Hello, monsieur. Je voudrais un sandwich au jambon, s'il vous plaît. Très bien, monsieur. Wow, I've done it. Thanks, Duckworth-Lewis method. Although it says here that I now have to eat 143 ham sandwiches in the next seven minutes. That can't be right. <laughs> Learn a new language with the Duck with Lewis method. Because the worst that can happen is that your head will explode. <laughs> Sadly, drugs are an increasing problem. Not for me. Uh, that's all in the past. Um, but for sports, and I'm proud to say here at Look Away Now, we've decided to address the issue head-on. We've asked our resident music and sport correspondent, Richie Webb, to compose a rock anthem to raise awareness of drugs for both athletes and the public alike. To everyone involved in sport... I got a message for you It's simple and concise Heed my song, I implore you and Just say no, just say no To drug testing in sports <laughs> Cause like in all the races Our athletes keep getting caught We gotta give them a chance To performance enhance Or our Olympic medal haul Will be sweet cock all. <laughs> Richie, this isn't quite what I had in mind. Yeah, shut up, Richardson, I'm singing. <laughs> yeah, listen up, athletes, education is the key. Yeah, drugs stay in your blood half as long as in your wee. <laughs> so when faced with a urine test, say it hurts when you pass water, they'll take your blood instead, so there's less chance they'll have caught ya. <laughs> Steroids help build muscle, aid recovery from training Diuretics disperse fluids if it's too much weight you're gaining Stimulants improve performance, increase your heart rate Cannabis will slow you down, but otherwise it's great <laughs> Yeah, do you know you'll only be tested twice a year And you can miss two tests in 18 months without fear yeah, the system's deeply flawed Ah, the loopholes are so big I could probably enter the women's javelin If I wore a bra and wig <laughs> Yeah, and even if, even if They persist with this drug testing I got a great idea in which I'm heavily investing I'm setting up a website For anyone athletic 
Selling children's urine and realistic fake prosthetics. Ooh, yeah. Just say no. Richie Webb, ladies and gentlemen. Well, on to badminton now, and never has the word shuttlecock... Oh, yes, that is magic! Well, we'll break off there because it sounds like there's been action over at the Gospels. Andy McMahon? Oh, I tell you what, Gary, this boy, Jesus, he is a miracle worker! (laughs) He has been at this wedding all afternoon. He's been virtually anonymous. He's done absolutely nothing. But like all the greats, he only needs one chance. The wine ran out, Gary. (laughs) Jesus called for water to be brought forth. He gave the crowd the eyes, did a couple of quick step-overs... And bang, it's wine. Oh, I tell you, it reminded me of when he fed that bumper bank holiday crowd of 5,000 with just a couple of loaves and fishes. That was fine for the prawn sandwich brigade, but this, this was for the genuine supporters of the happy couple who were there for the weekend, week out. I tell you, this guy walks on water, Gary. Literally. Thank you, Andy. Uh, news from the, uh, the rugby at Damascus, where St Paul has gone over for a try and surprisingly missed the conversion. <laughs> uh, let's return now uh, to Brian Brown, uh, the book of Revelation. What's happening, Brian? <laughs> well, this is brilliant here. We, we've just stopped because someone had their head chopped off with a scythe. I mean, that's possibly a career-threatening injury. So uh, <laughs> they brought on a mascot to entertain the crowds. But get <laughs> this, Gary. He's got the body of a lion and the head of a lamb and he's turning all the children into winged reptiles. I mean, much better than the time I went to Hibs and all they had was a bloke dressed as a banana. (laughs) And, Brian, tell me about the crowds. Uh, What are they like tonight? Well, everybody's trying to get a glimpse of the whore of Babylon, Gary, but uh, give her credit, even when Beckham's not playing, she still turns up for home fixes. (laughs) Thank you very much indeed. Now, news of what sounds like some dreadful defending back at the Book of Exodus. I'm told that Derby County's defence has just parted like the Red Sea. Um, Correction, correction for you, the Red Sea has just parted like Derby County's defence. So disappointment in a way there for both Paul, Jewell and the Pharaoh. Um, Over at the Book of uh, Habakkuk, the latest is that... come on now, um, now, knock it off! Well, more on that later. Sounds like there's been a bit of a flare-up over at the Book of Genesis. Stan Allen? Gary, if there's one thing I don't like to see, it's a wind-up merchant, but I'm afraid we've got one here. The lad in question is what I can only describe as a talking snake, and um, (laughs) he's trying to gold Eve into eating an apple from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, (laughs) What the snake's looking for? here, though, is a reaction. Oh, and he's got it as well, Gary! Eve's bitten into the apple, and now Adam comes piling in, too. Why he's getting involved, I do not know. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you something, Gary. That lad really is one rib short of a full set. No, uh, no it's a big decision here for God. The rules are very clear on this, but for me, it's a first offence. A bit of common sense is needed. I think this should be a yellow card. Oh, it's red, Gary! It's red! <laughs> They've both gone! So with a gun! of Eden now down to no men. You've got to fancy the creeping things from here. <laughs> Hamilton breaking as he approaches the chicane. Now through the chicane and accelerating out of the chicane. Ah, oh, things will be a whole lot faster on the straight. They'd only remove the bloody chicane. Shame on you, Silverstone. <laughs> Darling? Yes? Would you like me to enter you at all? Well, if you must, dear. How's that for you, my love? Fine. <laughs> oh. Is your sex life lacking that certain zing? <laughs> then why not try the new sexual technique that's sweeping the nation? Yes, it's the Duckworth Lewis method. <laughs> Having sex with the Duckworth Lewis method is so easy. You simply pick the level of orgasm you want to achieve, divide it by the number of penises present, multiply that by the difference between your age and Marcus Triscothic's age cubed, take away the nipple you first thought of, and bingo, you're doing the sex. Oh! Get in! Oh, oh, darling, that was wonderful! It certainly was! (laughs) And it's all thanks to the Duckworth Lewis method. Yes! Although I should warn you, dear, that you're now going to have to have 90 Four babies before lunch. <laughs> Enjoy great sex with the Duckworth Lewis method, because once you've had unbelievably complicated algebraic coitus, you'll never go back. <laughs> Now, modern football is ephemeral. Heroes are created and forgotten overnight. A good example is that bloke who did that thing yesterday. Uh, This presents a problem for publishers of football autobiographies. How do you get them out in the shops before the public have forgotten who the players concerned 
are. Joining me to answer that very question is our sporting books correspondent, Dave Lamb. Well, quite simply, Gary, the writing process needed speeding up. So I've put together a computer programme that'll ghostwrite any footballer's autobiography in a flash. Mm, that sounds great. How does it work, Dave? Well, it's very simple, Gary. Even Craig Bellamy could do it. <laughs> <coughs> First, I click on File, then select New Football Autobiography, and then we just follow the menu screen. So uh, pick a player for me, Gary. Uh, OK, uh, Joe Ledley. Who? The Cardiff midfielder who scored the winning goal against Barnsley in the FA Cup semi-finals. Well, perfect. No one's going to remember him by June. <laughs> Please type in event which has made Joe Ledley worth doing a book about. Wonder strike against Barnsley. Right. This search found Joe Ledley of Cardiff City. Please enter name of injured teammate. Robbie Fowler. <laughs> has the subject vehemently denied involvement with A, hard drugs, B, old prostitute, C, teammate an unconscious local woman on a YouTube sex video? <laughs> well, yes to all. Who does the subject want to dedicate the victory to? Select one, his mum, his dad, his dead dad, an injured teammate, God, the fans, an injured fan, his injured dead dad. <laughs> well, let's say uh, his dead dad. And that's it. Close and print. And here it comes already. Dave, that's fantastic. Can you, can you read a bit for us, please? Oh, yeah, sure. <clears throat> a footballer's life is one of highs and Robbie Fowler. The problem is that people remember your lows more than your unconscious local woman. The goal against my dead dad was something I'd been waiting more than Barnsley years for. I remember the first time I put on a Cardiff shirt. It was Cardiff versus Cardiff, and the Cardiffs were unhappy because Cardiff's manager, Mark Cardiff, had become violently ill from eating an out-of-date old prostitute. Dave, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to have to interrupt the, the programme for a moment here and cross uh, over to our sport on television correspondent, Catherine Jakeways. She's at Television Centre for uh, a very sad newsflash. Well, Gary, first top of the pops, then Grange Hill, and now more heartbreaking news for a long-serving BBC show. After 38 years on the box, a question of sport will continue broadcasting. <laughs> Catherine, a truly, uh, a truly devastating development. Um, what's the mood like down there? Well, Gary, people are astonished. I mean, what more could they have done to get it cancelled? <laughs> it's an entertainment programme with no recognised entertainers in it. So what happens next? Well, they've been asking that here for years now, Gary. In short, nothing funny. <laughs> Catherine, thank you. Well, now, I'm sad to say it's time for us to be subjected to the views and grievances of a small minority of mindless <coughs> idiots who insist on spoiling the programme for the vast majority of you. It's the Look Away Now rant line. Hi, it's Joe Ledley here, the Cardiff midfielder. Um, I just heard your computer-written so-called autobiography of me, and uh, I really have to say that it brought the memories absolutely flooding back. <laughs> Hello there. I just thought you might like to know that John's Revenge, a felon oinks, is an anagram of Jan Venegor of Hasselink. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, it's, uh, it's Bobby Robson here. I'd like to order uh, two wonton soups, uh, Kung Po chicken, beef in oyster sauce, are you getting this? <laughs> Hello? Elsie, El is this an eight or a six? <laughs> oh, knackers. <laughs> Hello, Vanessa, it's Peter phoning you again. Um, look, this is getting bloody ridiculous now. Just pick up the phone. Pick up the phone, you witch! <laughs> Show a bit of ruddy maturity! God here. Um, do you think it's appropriate to make jokes about the Bible? I don't hear you laughing at the Quran. To redress the balance, I think it's only fair to let me tell a joke about Muhammad. Three Muslims walk into a pub. <laughs> now, uh, we're into the, uh, the final few moments of our featured books of the Bible, but I believe we've had a, an unexpectedly early finish over at Genesis, Stan. Yeah, yeah, it's book abandoned here, uh, Gary. Waterlogged pitch. Um, <laughs> uh, God, I, 
I've got no choice, really, but to call it off. The conditions have deteriorated to the point where there's water covering the entire surface of the earth, and um, <laughs> that's just not conducive to good football. It's, uh, it's like what Brian Clough used to say, if God wanted us to play football in the sea, he'd have made Gary Birtles a fish. <laughs> that anyway. But the, the, the big positive for me, Gary, has been an impressive tactical performance from the lad Noah. He set his team out today with a very progressive looking 2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-